Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know, sometimes, sometimes you expect a certain degree of reasonableness from a reasonable man. And in law, we refer to the reasonable man as the man on the clap of omnibus. But certainly, Mr. Speaker, that this, the member from Miko South, probably never boarded the clap of omnibus, and I rather suspect he took it behind a van. He took it behind a van. A, a grey one. And he once drove an FAR in the hot sun. Right. But Mr. Speaker, you will have to permit me, because I have to respond to almost everything that the member for Miku South said. First and foremost, let me touch the cricket ground. The cricket ground. Mr. Speaker, this minister, this member for Miku South, as Prime Minister, became so accustomed of awarding huge contracts to one person that he fails to understand that at the Darren Sami Stadium there were 22 contractors. 22. 22. Central. Member of Miku South. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, the member, uh, on a point of order, the member is misleading the House. Um, I don't believe the member can uh, su substantiate the claim that our government only gave contracts to one contractor. In fact, the evidence is there is to show that we gave contracts to hundreds of contractors. So I'd like him to withdraw that statement, Mr. Speaker. Member of Castle Central, please proceed. Thank you very much. Because, Mr. Speaker, I was about bringing my point into focus. Eleven days before the election, Mr. Speaker, this Minister of Finance then attempted to sign a contract for $70 million on St. Jude to be paid back in one year, attracting interest of 1% per day. So hot. Même nom là qui a parlé about la hein. Un jour avant l'élection, un jour 11 days, il a tempé pour signer un contrat pour 70 millions de dollars pour gouvernement payer de Yolande et pour tous les jours, pour tous les jours nous pas payer, nous ca payer yo pour ça l'intérêt. So if a bill Mr. Speaker of 20 million came in and we are late for one day. Every day we are late, it would cost us $200,000. You know? And this is the man today who has the audacity to stand up and attempt to want to give a lecture in financing, Mr. Speaker. So, Darren Sami, 22 contractors at Darren Sami Stadium, 22 cricket grounds at Masha. There were 14 contractors. So that's a total of 36 contractors on two sporting facilities. And guess what, Mr. Speaker? That very man, that very member, Mr. Speaker, went to the stadium, the, the grounds, the cricket grounds, and had the audacity to say that this government borrowed $80 million just for the Darren Semi Cricket Grounds. Oh, what a lie, Mr. Speaker. You see, if he used to stay in Parliament. Mr. Speaker, again, on the point of order, the members misleading the House, I never, never said $80 million was spent on Darren Semi. I spoke about Darren But he Sammy. didn't say that either. That's what he just said, Mr. Speaker. No, he didn't say okay. that. But can I make it the correction? There was no $80 million. I never said $80 million was spent just on Darren Sammy. I spoke about Groselet and I spoke about Mindu Phillip Park. Did you not okay. mention 80 million? Right, Mr. Speaker, I did mention 80 million because that's the amount of money that was borrowed, Mr. Speaker. 80 million. But member, member. But when you don't give information as to how member, the money is spent and the contracts, then people are open to speculate. Member for Miku South, you are aware that no government borrowing bill for the cricket grounds ever made its way to this house. There was a guarantee, which is entirely different. Well, yes, but the government didn't borrow. You just said, member, yes, member, yes. member, you made 
a specific point that this government borrowed 80 million. And I'm saying to you, I presided over that sitting. There has never been a bill for any, from NLA for the government to borrow. It was for the government to, to guarantee. There's a fundamental difference. Please proceed, Member of Gaspar Central. Mr. 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 Speaker, I guess you expect much from those who don't know better. But Mr. Speaker, it is that kind of disingenuity actually doing a video, $80 million, and you know, for you to stand in this chamber and to tell St. Lucians and the wider world that you are open to speculate. It means you have been feeding the people with disinformation and misinformation rather than giving them the truth. Because Mr. Speaker is what's right here. The Minister of Sports, he detailed how that 80 million dollars would be used. He detailed because you are never in the house. You are not doing what the people put you in here to do. You did something on Thursday, Friday you're in Canada, come back here, create chaos, and fly back. That's all you do. If you were here, you would have known how the $80 million was spent. You know, Mr. Speaker, that $80 million, part was used for Darren Selmy Stadium, where 22 contractors will. Part was used for Marshall Grounds, where 14 contractors were engaged. And there will be more facilities around the island to be improved with that $80 million. So stop it. You need to stop it. You know, and Mr. Speaker, the man has the audacity. But the lie. Watch who is talking about persons lying. Look at who, the character of the member for Miku South, who has gone on record. Not once, twice, three times, four times. Mr. Speaker, like the death announcement say, too numerous to mention, telling lies. And being caught red-handed in telling lies. Speaking to a Belgian reporter, there were only eight, between eight and ten deportees so the year. He told the Belgian reporter, they just deported 800 back to St. Lucia. And then the Bajan reporter in a Barbadian accent, 800? Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> and the statistics and data show that was, you know, last night, Mr. Speaker, I was sitting next to the member from Babunu, and the Empire did a uh, signal a wide. I'm just being digressing slightly, permit me. And then she said, oh, that's not a wide, that's a large. And then she said, that one is an extra large. <laughs> So that lie, Mr. Speaker, in terms of grading it, they deported about 10 persons maximum to your country. Here you are telling the world that we are so infested with criminals that 800 were deported. And that was a blatant lie. Right in this chamber, Mr. Speaker, you were the presiding officer when the member for Labry indicated to the member for Miku South that he had said at a meeting of the Summit of the Americas, in a nutshell, I'm paraphrasing, give way to transparency, it stops Member in our way progress. Central, just for the record, that took place between 2016 and 2021. I was not the presiding officer. Oh, you were not the presiding officer. I thought, I thought, you know, that, no, that, that, that happened quite recently. Oh, he referenced it, right. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Right, he referenced it and then he said it wasn't true. And here's the clip of exactly what the man said he never said. The man, Mr. Speaker, the member from Miku South, was on a television show. Everybody's watching, the world is watching. People are listening, hundreds of thousands, if not millions across the globe. The price of fuel in Grenada has gone down below $10 a gallon. Next two seconds, Mr. Speaker. You know, the thing is, the amount of time that had elapsed between saying it and denying he said it, it makes one believe that the cavity where his mental membrane ought to reside is vacant. Because you cannot believe a man just said, 
<laughs> you cannot believe the man is on a talk show. The man is being televised. The man said, and I quote, the price of fuel in Grenada has just gone down below $10. When a caller call called a few seconds, I never said that. I never said that. They had to remind him, yes, you said it right there. He blamed single mothers. He went on another show with Andre Paul. I never mentioned single mothers. They had to play it for him to remind him. So this man, Mr. Speaker, he has a problem. The member for Miku South has a problem in his ability to retain or his inconvenient ability to face the truth. Oh, I'll wait it. Mr. Speaker, so we dealt with the lies. The man, he now speaks, Mr. Speaker, about wasting money. Wasting money. And the member for Swazel talk about COVID. You know, what we must understand, Mr. Speaker, whatever we do remains on record. So when I hear him talking about the Banan's land, you know what they do? They stir up trouble where there is none. And they label it a scandal. They label it a scandal out of convenience. Mr. Speaker, everybody knows the story of the banana land. I brought it here. There is a lawsuit against the, the member of, 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 the, of, of Miku South in calling it corruption. They have bought minutes doing everything. The check was paid by somebody who's patriotic to the United Workers' Party. I was not involved. The banana land scandal. And they call it a scandal. That's what they do. Like the CIP. They do their thing. They tag with... A criminal. They tag, but you know, that member from Miku South, I think he has a problem. He has a problem. His friends, his friends, his friends. You are bringing a speaker to basically, you want your people to be the mentor to your people, but he was sentenced to 10 years jail. He's a convicted fella. You know, well, he ain't shining no more. Then you bring somebody else. Big festivity at Sandals, Jack Lam, wanted by Interpol. As soon as he, leave, he left there, he was arrested. He was, a left, he was arrested. Then, Mr. Speaker, he comes with a man, Martinez. He comes with Martinez, who was in prison in both. Mr. Speaker, think of it. I mean, all of us may have gone through a difficulty in our life uh, in childhood. As we grow older, we, you know, we be... Member for Miku South? I can stand on many point of orders, Mr. Speaker, but we hear all day. But on the last one, um, I don't recall ever coming anywhere with Mr. Martinez, if that's the person he's, re he's making reference to. I've never met Mr. Philip Martinez. I've never been anywhere with him, Mr. Speaker. Ooh. I never said... I said... Okay, Peter denied Jesus, I understand that. But Mr. Speaker, all of a sudden, that same Philip Martinez seemingly is the star boy of the opposition. Now I was saying, Mr. Speaker, all of us may have had something in our past that we, not, we are not proud of. All of us. But to tell me, the star boy of the Flabo now is a man who was in prison in the United States, who was in prison in France, who has a rap sheet as long as from here to government buildings. Today, today. Mr. Speaker. Member from Miku South. On point of order, the man is making all kinds of dispurging remarks of an individual who is not even here to defend himself. And how is that a point of order? Mr. Speaker, we're not allowed to be saying these things. How is, is that, how is that a point of order? We're allowed to make dispurging remarks about persons who are not inside the Is house. disparaging untrue? Yes, it is, Mr. Speaker. But if you want to say he makes untrue statements, okay, well, he's say making, so. He's but making untrue disparaging statements. by itself. I'm not here to defend Mr. Martinez. I don't know Mr. Martinez. But I'm just saying to you, how can you come to the House and make those kinds of disparaging remarks about an individual? Remember, not here, Mr. let Speaker. me repeat. A disparaging remark is not necessarily and automatically a breach of the standing orders. If you can prove what you're saying about, if the remarks are self-evident, 
How is it a point of order? How is it self-evident, Mr. Speaker? If he's going to be, he's a member of the government. If, in fact, he's going to make those remarks, and I'm asking him, then he needs to provide the Which proof part of, of his remarks do you, that are you suggesting is untrue? That he the the, the length of his arm. That's what he said. He actually, he actually said it longer than that. My apologies. He actually said it longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> member of Akashi Central, please proceed. <laughs> you know, Papi Shu, yeah, that's his favorite. You know, Mr. Speaker, what I'm saying, all of a sudden, a fraudster, a convicted felon, is the one who is the star boy of the United Workers' Party. So much so, so much so, that the, that the deputy leader, if that's what he is, the one who was uh, the representative of Ancillary and he could never get back there. He even called on the Prime Minister to dismiss persons on the word of a convicted fraudster. Huh? Mr. Speaker, again, Mem of point of order, members misleading the House. If I were to understand what Mr. Martinez said, Mr. Martinez made examples of a case that's taking place on Sinclair. No, no, but he was this. I and never said the member. Between the St. Kitts situation right. and our infrastructure program. And at no point, the reason why we're asking for the minister to be dismissed is because of the, the secrets behind the infrastructure program. And we, WTF, Mr. Speaker, we don't know where the funds are. That is why he's being asked. You have a CEO who now the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, Remember has what? said that he went to Remember, are you making a speech or a point of order? On his own decision, yet he came back and gave a press statement, said he went there to defend <laughs> the reputation of, of the, um, the, the unit. Mr. Speak. Speaker, these are blatant lies. The member should be fired and the minister should be replaced until there's a proper investigation, Mr. Speaker. Member, member for Miku South. What the member oh, no, for Castri said, Castri Central yeah, said, was that the former member for ancillary canneries called for the removal of personnel within the CIP office and the minister responsible on the, the words, on the basis of information provided by, by a fraudster. A fraudster. <laughs> member. Please proceed. Yes, yes. Now, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, let, 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 let me move on. Let, let me move on, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the, the member for Miku South in, in, in jest, Mr. Speaker, and in his quest in his quest to malpalais this government, and we say in English, bad talk, he gave what in his view are several downsided policies of this government and asked whether the manifesto contained those, those deeds that we currently do. So Mr. Speaker, I want to turn, flip the coin a bit to ask him did you promise the people of this country that notwithstanding the hair mall was worth $60 million, you would have sold it for 13.5? No, no, I don't want you to answer. The, the Prime Minister never asked you. The Prime Minister never asked you to answer. No. You asked the Prime Minister questions and he never answered. You know, so I want to ask you a couple questions. One was the, the mall. The mall was bought when the member for Castries North was Prime Minister. The mall was valued a couple weeks before it was sold. It was valued at $60 million, Mr. Speaker. But notwithstanding, there is a deed of sale which I have exhibited in this chamber where the government sold that same mall for less than quarter of the price for $13.5 billion. Did you promise that? Did you promise the people of St. Lucia that you would have paid 2,000 pounds a night in a hotel room? 
Did you promise that? Did you promise that you would have left your vehicle on from the time you left your house until you go back home, burning fuel because you know it is the taxpayers that are funding it? Did you promise that? Huh? Did you promise to give Maloney our vaccine money? Did you promise that? Did you promise you would give Lockerbie $32 million? Did you promise that? Did you promise you would have rented five five offices from your father, including the traffic department, which is still there. Did you promise any of that? Huh? SSDF, TVET, uh, traffic. Hmm? Did you promise? Did you promise? Did you not promise? In fact, that was a promise. You promised when the Pajoa letters came out, signed by your minister, that you would have conducted an investigation. You promised that. Did you cause an investigation to be pursued into that matter? Huh? <laughs> Did you not promise farmers you'd be sending bananas to France? Hmm? Did you not? You see, so stop. You, you must understand. You must understand that the records are there. The records are there. And whatever I say, you can never deny. You will speculate. That's what you do. You will spread propaganda. You will call it, and then he'll call it, um, 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 uh, how, how you call them again? A scandal. He'll just say anything. Make up a story. Oh, the scandal about CIP. What scandal? What scandal? Our CIP is number two in the world. What scandal? Number three. What scandal? A man says that one of our persons selling passports is preventing him from making money, so we must intervene. That's a scandal. That's the scandal. And talk about we sold so many, 1.4 billion US. You know? And then Banan's land was sold. We have a nice, if we had gone to rent, Mr. Speaker, and it's here gone to rent space at Colony House. There, it would have been, there would have never been a scandal. But NSC sold a piece of property, immediately bought another. Today, have their own office after 57 years. But that is a scandal. That is a scandal. That's vision. That's what it is. Now, you know, you know, the member for Zozel, Mr. Speaker, spoke about COVID and COVID did this and COVID did that. You know, when I'm in here, and you all know I have a very good memory, mine is not as shallow as the man to your right. I want to ask them, Mr. Speaker, I want to ask them, you all said COVID shrink or shrunk your income and revenue stream. But was it COVID that asked you all to build a bypass road for T.O.A. King that cost $15 million? Was it COVID? Was it COVID? that caused you all to give Pomandu $13 million? Was it COVID? Huh? Was it COVID that forced you to settle with range developers for $32 million? Was it COVID? Horses, $112 million. Horses. Horses before hospitals. Oh, incinerators. You know, incinerators, another one. You know, a man come here. They, are, they have never been used. This Minister of Finance at the time, Mr. Speaker, to facilitate T.O. King. Look at what the man did, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Let me deal with the message. <laughs> he took our thousand acres of land, gave it to a man at a dollar an acre for 99 years. Mr. Speaker, on a point of order, the member is misleading the House. Rise on a point of order. You must have my permission to proceed. You don't just rise on a point of order and proceed. I proceed now. On a point of order, member, the member is misleading the House, Mr. Speaker. We've had this discussion over and over, so it's not to say that the minister does not know that. There was no thousand acres leased to DSH. There was about 180 acres that were leased for the horse racing track with the expectation to build a horse racing track. All of the other lands were sold to DSH at a cost of 60,000 US dollars an acre. 
unlike, unlike Mr. Speaker, what? that the, the property down here for the halls of justice, one dollar is the lease per what? year, Mr. Speaker, for the pro for a prime property in town. And they know exactly why the dollar is what? there, Mr. Speaker. The what? dollar represents a financial contribution what? in exchange for something that the developer is going to do. What? Akeem, Mr. Mr. Theo Akeem, built the horse racing track, Mr. Speaker, all with his own money. No CIP money, his own money. He paid for the horses with his own money. And I'm going to ask that the member resist from continuing to, per to say that. And if he's going to, Mr. Speaker, I'm going what? to ask that he brings the evidence what? to show that that's the case, if what? I'm wrong. But I know I am not wrong. Mr. Speaker, no, no, no. Like the old people who say, Sa ika di la se o kwevche. Se se poumye fwa mwa katan le set li siye. Dat mam miku sa ouf ka di. Dat yo vante bay ti yo a king at 60,000 US pa ak. DSH ti yo a king. Mr. Speaker, I want to put the member on notice. I will put the member of notice on notice that I will ask this August chamber through you to ask the member to produce the deed of sale where Tio King bought land from this government at 60 US, 60,000 US an acre. He will have to produce the documents, Mr. Speaker, because that is what he does. He just says anything. 60,000 US an acre? I have never heard that. In fact, when the document came out, 60,000, 60, 60, 60,000. Mr. Speaker, no, this is serious. This is serious, Mr. Speaker. The member must be called on to substantiate his assertions, especially because he was Minister of Finance and Prime Minister. You. <laughs> no, Mr. Speaker, that is serious because, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, if the member can produce, it's just like I said, I can produce the deed of sale by the government to, of the Diamond for 13 and a half million, if he can produce the deed of sale where government sold land, at 60,000 US an acre, and he can show that the land is currently vested in Tiwa King, I will withdraw all statements in relation to this. And I will refrain from going down that road. Because I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, this one is not a fat categoric. This one is a gigantic lie. Tiwa King has never bought one square foot of land from us. Not a square foot. So let's move on. Let's move on. So we rented land at a, a, a dollar an acre for 99 years. We went, we built a bypass road, Mr. Speaker. $15 million plus. As a result of that, Mr. Speaker, the government is spending almost $100,000 a month transporting garbage out of the dumps in Viewfort because the working say he can't take the smell. But above, before that, they bought incinerators to facilitate the smooth transition into a king of spot, as he called it, and he's on, on media saying that, with a, a spot of kings. $11 million in incinerators, Mr. Speaker. The incinerators have not worked for one day. Not one day. In addition to that, Mr. Speaker, he bought replacement land for the farmers for $11 million. Look, this government just brought in animals of better breeds. But guess what? He decommissioned the Beauceju um, abattoir. He decommissioned it to facilitate the UAK. But I will tell you, under Philip J.P. and this Minister of Agriculture, we will soon have another abattoir for our people in this country. That's how you care for your people. So everything the man has done is destructive, Mr. Speaker. Everything he has done. He came in. He stopped. Step. He stopped nice. He stopped the laptop program. He stopped the distress fund. So how can you, 
That same man that stopped all the programs that are earmarked for the average poor people, how would he ever consider minimum wage? How would he ever consider minimum wage? How could he ever consider pensioners' wages? No, he will not, because all his acts are against, are anti poor people, Mr. Speaker. All your acts are anti poor people, so you would never support that. You know, yes, I'm coming to the vendors in a while. I'm coming. You know, and that is the same man, Mr. Speaker, today, oh, the poor people. Blah, 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 blah. No. No, everything you have done is to show blatantly how could you ask persons with a small plywood structure, uninsurable chattel, ask them to go and take insurance. Yes. That is wickedness, utmost wickedness. And I've said so before and I'll say it again. The time will come, Mr. Speaker, not only when we have to present our report cards to the electorate, because I know what his card will be written, what, what they write on it. But we have to stand in front of the Almighty God and the wickedness of some people trying to portray this country as all doom and gloom going overseas. The same two and a half percent, Mr. Speaker, he now complains about. He was in Trinidad asking Kamala Passad to introduce it. Sout, you know, Soutism. He suffers from that. The same policies that have been rolled out here, with which he has difficulty because it does not suit his political narrative. He will go overseas and say, do it. It's good. Do it. The same people here, he told, you have lost your voice. You have lost your right to speak. He goes to Trinidad and say, let's form an association of leaders of the opposition. We need to have a voice in running government. <laughs> you know, double standard, Mr. Speaker. And that is why, and I listen to him, Mr. Speaker. I listen to this man. You know, the man talk about gas. Excise tax is excise tax. It's added on the value, and it's not exercise tax, it's excise. Okay? It's added on the value. No one has control over that. No one has control over that. But what you did, you make solutions, you took them for fools. They six dollars and eighty cents on every gallon of gas. Come and match with me. You know? And they marched. Orange the orange march. And that, that 680 was never existent. It was never existent, Mr. Speaker. And you know what is worse, Mr. Speaker? A couple days after he won the elections. And the day after he won the elections. There is a big circus in Miku. Yeah, people are, people are, it's a circus I call it. Because the thing is, who is leading those people? But it just had to take time for them to realize that the man who is leading them has no leadership qualities. None whatsoever. And you cannot come in the toes of Philip J. Pierre. Not at all. And so, Mr. Speaker, and so, Mr. Speaker, he told them 680, they marched. So they won the elections. Because a couple of days before that, he told the farmers, I'll be sending bananas to France and Martinique. So guess what he do? He identifies with them immediately, FAR 15. By the way, what you did if FAR 15 at the end? <laughs> FAR 15, and he's driving that in the farming communities. He say farmer too. <laughs> so hot. And then, Mr. Speaker, he tells the guy, he, <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, as I speak, as I speak, there's a document on my desk. Once I sign it, the price of gas is going to go down. And they clap, click, click, click. Up to now, Mr. Speaker. Up to now. In fact, rather than going down, it went up. You'll stop fooling the people. Stop it. My attache. No, no, no. I'll tell you who my attache is. You remember there was somebody you told me one time, make sure I hold her while she's on the aircraft because she has some phobia for heights. You remember? She's my attache. Okay. Uh, I held her very tight. I was attached to her as my attache. Mr. Mr. Speaker, let me, let me say this. I am proud of Dax Novel as my attache. Very proud of that. And I want you all to give him a round of applause. Mr. Speaker, 
Mr. Speaker, this is a man who found himself in a fight. And during the fight, in defense of himself, no, I'm going. He happened to stab his opponent. That novel currently, Mr. Speaker, employs about a hundred people in this country. I can tell you he has a restaurant and bar in Rodney B. He has one in Grosily. He has a, a, a wholesale, a wholesale a gaming shop, two other bars in the city. And he rented none from their father. He never asked to rent from anybody's father. You know, if so, it was a disease, you, you'd have been in... Now, let me go to the vendors, Mr. Speaker. You know, I didn't even come here for all of that. You know. Mr. Speaker, when I hear the United Workers' Party lament the situation, lament the attempt to make the, the city look good without compromising the livelihoods of people. Mr. Speaker, we never, and I would never engage in taking the trades and artillery, vending artillery, of anybody trying to make a living and go and discard them at the martial market. Mr. Speaker, on two consecutive years, for two consecutive years, on Mother's Day, on Mother's Day, the United Workers' Party, under the leadership of the, from the member of Miku North, Miku South, sorry. Hey, Jerry, you I do that. <laughs> took all vendors all around the city and went and threw their things, threw their things away. Mr. Speaker, since your humble servant came back as the representative of Castry Central, each and every single booth, vending booth you see, was built under my charge, Mr. Speaker. All of them. They spent five years in office, not one. They did not build, build one. I built the Jeremy Street Plaza. I built the, the Darling Road Plaza. I built over 40 booths in that same year. And then, since we came in, Mr. Speaker, I'm nearing 50. Beetle Park, we opened 22 for those vendors, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Who, who, who cares about vendors? Y'all? Who Member from Miku South. Mr. Speaker, again, the member on the point of order, the member is misleading the House again, Mr. Speaker. In fact, the records stand very clear. And when you go to the Castries market, and you go back to the Castries market, you see all those vending stations that were built in the back. That was my administration. The refurbishment of the bathrooms Mr. in the Speaker. back, which were a disgrace, and the paving at the back, were just one example of what we did. And when you talk about all of the TV lodges that we were building around the island, Mr. Speaker, so it's untrue to say that we did not dedicate our resources to building vending booths. We did. It's a viable part of our economy, and we recognize that. So while I applaud the minister for what he has done, uh, you applauded me now. The only person is again misleading the House, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I was not referring to refurbishment or partitioning of an existing structure to which he refers. I am not referring to that. I am referring to establishing new vending facilities. The market was there long before you and I were born. So I, I, I can speak up on that. Oh no, this days he going. Even Coco T he tried the other day and when he do so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, he went and bread in the valley. Jordi, you guys take payball out here. Stop trying to be what you are not. Stop it. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm not talking about if someone comes here and they partition inside of here for, to, to, to suit a specific purpose. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about new vending facilities. Establishing new vending facilities. And Mr. Speaker, I can boldly say that those persons that were removed from the printry, all but two, all but two got both. And I'll tell you why those two didn't get one. 
has a previous one at the corner of Jeremy Street and Darling Road. The place is called Champions Bar and Restaurant. It was in her name. She passed it on to us and once another. And another person who wants a move calls us to refurbish one she already has in the arcade. So everybody else got a, got a vending booth. So when you talk about vendors, you all have no compassion for poor people like I do. The only man that almost is on power with me is the Prime Minister. <laughs> I have a passion for poor people. So Mr. Speaker, that's the thing about, about the, the vending booth. Mr. Speaker, then the man talk about we passed two and a half percent and the country is in trouble. Let's say it this year. Lautan Mam Miku South Palais. Ukareli Kwe is a bodye, Jacky Pov, but Sapavwe. Seli Mema Yone Bomate. Tevle Passe Loa. Pu tax boudé. Tax. South, tax shebo, tax block, tax address. Stand on the point of order, everybody. One o'clock in the morning, a draconian piece of legislation was passed under your command, taxing what the poor people in this country do for a living. And thank God, man, let me tell you, God was so good on July, July 26, 2021. Recreation fishing head. God was so good, Mr. Speaker, that God caused that piece of legislation to remain in abeyance through its passage and the installation of a new government. And I can tell you, if Philip J. P. L. led administration would never, ever pass that piece of law that would tax black pudding, that would tax blocks, that would tax hairdressing, and all of the others. Charcoal and all. And today, you have the audacity to talk about taxing people. So what? He's the same one. And again, that's one instance where God was good. 11 days before the election, Mr. Speaker, had we not won the election, you know what would have, what would have happened? We would have been paying $70 million over a year. And 1% per day. 1% per day if our payments are late. Huh? Then you talk about health. Who talk about health? You? Bradley, you have the audacity to talk about health? Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. Sorry. Sorry. You have the audacity to talk. Mr. Speaker, they were in government. When the OKE was commissioned, we had Dr. King paying a little sum, being a patriot solution, patriotic solution. But no, he sidelined them. And for two years, Mr. Speaker, Pain came and city two million dollars a month. Wow. If I lie, say I lie. Two million dollars a month, Mr. Speaker. And guess what? We had to come in here and borrow money to pay for that expense. And then you ask, what are we doing with the borrowed funds? That's what we have to do with it. Two million a month. You know? That is the kind of thing that was done to this country. And you have the audacity to talk about we wasting money and what we're doing with the money we to pay for the foolishness that you all did. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, money they had. The last thing, let me mention that. Match against yourself. You know? You have a foolishness like that. You all go in and match against yourself. And again, is your inability. You never touch minimum wage. We touch it. You don't even understand the scientific approach that this thing has to take. Yeah. That has to balance the, the probability of increasing the price of goods and unemployment versus making 20,000 people better off. Yes, sir. You, know, you know nothing about that. Balance. You think it's just pluck a figure from the air. So he goes on social media. What are you recommending that the United Workers Party should place as the minimum? No. That's not how it is done. The legislation puts together a team of experts, a team of experts to advise the government. And they say, if you go beyond that, you might cause inflation. If you go beyond that, you might cause unemployment. This is the balancing act. But the man will ask, what do you think? 
a United Workers Party should set its minimum wage. Except for how you take a government, about the just have a nipple bag, and then he has WTF. I want to ask him the same thing. WTF? I could see it in your face. You know? So you would have never tackled minimum wage. Never. It was in your interest not to do so. Far less tackled pensioners. Everything you have done is anti poor people. So the minimum wage targets poor people. The pensioners are targets poor people. It is not in your DNA to do anything to uplift the standard of living of those people. You know, so you would not tackle it. You know. <laughs> now, Mr. Speaker, I sometimes you come <laughs> with an intention of making your contribution very short. But a lot of the foolishness that you sometimes hear, the kind of garbage that is spewed from the mouths of the members of the opposition, if left unrefuted, can easily go down the annals of belief. Because some of our gullible people will quite proudly repeat, Pamukidi, say likidi ekme believely. With those words, Mr. Speaker, I rest my case, I take my seat.